Hi guys, okay, today we're going to cover originate and develop concepts um, assignment three, and that is putting together an animatic. So by now you should have created your storyboards and have them in some sort of digital format on your computer. Um, I keep mine here on my desktop at the moment under Canon storyboards because my project's about a Canon camera. So the first thing I want to do is just come down here to Launchpad and we just need to find iMovie which will be in here somewhere. I can never find what I'm looking for. There we go. Okay, iMovie. So we'll just start it up. Now, when you open up iMovie, you should be presented with a screen somewhat similar to this. All right. Now, you'll see down here is your library menu options and your projects. Okay, and you should have a library here. So to start with, you need to create a project. Okay, so just come up here and go to File and say New Movie. Okay, now you can choose themes for it, but really for this, I would probably be um, wanting to just keep this fairly simple. So let's just put no theme for now and we'll click Create. Now I'm going to give this a name of Assessment 3 BSB CRT 501. A and my name. Okay, and I'm just gonna click OK. All right. Now this here is my actual movie project. All right. So this is where all my work is going to end up, and this is what the final project is going to be. So I just, as you can see, because I've clicked on it here, it's already opened down the bottom. If I switch, double click, it goes to my movie. Okay, so it's pretty simply straightforward. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to bring in my images from my storyboard. So I'm just going to click import media. And like I said, mine are on the desktop under kind of storyboards. So I'll just click folder and in come all my images. Okay, so now I can just need to preview them all here and see where my first one is. There's my first one. So. To get started, all I need to do is click on my first image and just drag it down here onto the timeline. Okay, and obviously I'm going to need all of them, so let's just bring them all down onto my timeline in the order they're supposed to go. Uh, okay, I can't see that, so I'm just going to use this little slider here to let me see more of my project. Okay, now I'll bring the fourth one down. Now the fifth. And lucky last. Okay. Now, I'm really not going to worry about the orientation and what's being shown at the moment. Let's start out with something different. Okay, the first thing we need to do is create a title for our project. Okay, so I'm just going to come up here and select standard title. I'm going to drag this down into the very front before my first slide. Okay, now as you can see, there's a whole bunch of text there, so just select your, your title box, double click on it, and now you can modify the text. Introducing the This is my basic, my basic introductory screen. Okay, now I actually am going to end up wanting to overlay that on here, or I normally would, but I've only got 30 seconds to fill. So right now I've put my introduction in. So let's just grab this end one, which is running for four seconds, and just make it span out to 30 just by grabbing the edges there. Okay. Now my whole project is 30 seconds. Ah, that's right, gotta get out edit mode, click onto the time bar, okay. Now just double click onto your slide. Now we're in an edit mode, and as you can see it's got start 
and it's got end. Um, now we also have a Ken Burns option, a crop to fill and a fit. Now I don't really want to mess with these at the moment. What I want to do is get the orientation of my image correct. So this here is the rotate option. I can rotate it left or right as many times as I want. So I'm just going to rotate that. Okay. Now, now that it's rotated, you can see here I've got these arrows here in my storyboard. And that suggests and says that we're going to zoom in. Okay. Now, just looking at this, I think that's already doing that for me okay so I'll show you how to do it manually because well, iMovie's already figured it out for me on this one but what I would normally do let's just say I want it to go wider than that so we'll click start click on the word start no it didn't do it just drag you slide on the beginning now click the start box now when you highlight over the corner you'll see you get your arrows you can actually stretch it out and this is an option on all four corners okay so now when this starts as you can see it's going to move start from where I told it and zoom all the way in now okay let's just take another look at this now I want that to end a little bit closer so let's shrink this down a little bit Okay, there we go. Now as we do it, should come right in, should come right in. Okay, and nice and close. Okay. So now, what do we need to do here? Okay, we need to go to our next slide and we need to orientate it the same as we did the last one. Okay, and I'm showing here that we're use, going to use a slider for this shot and it's going to go left or right or right to left. Well, I'm going to choose right to left in this instance. So I'm going to just move my slider over here and I'll drag the start box over to here. Now let's just shrink this down because I really... Actually, let's make this a much smaller box and there we go. And then we can bring it all the way over here. Okay, now we'll click end and we'll shrink it down to the same size as the other one. Alright, now when we go and view that, if you look it'll be zoomed in and it will be sliding right to left. Okay, so our third slide now need to rotate it okay now according to this I'm tilting up so when you go from top to bottom or bottom to top it's called a tilt if you're going left to right or right to left um, it's called a pan a slide is actually when you're not turning the camera but the camera is actually moving left or right um, it can be on a dolly, it can be on a slider, it can be whatever. You have to specify whether it's on a dolly or whether it's on a slider though because otherwise um, no one's going to know and the wrong equipment could be brought. So, but anyways, just looking at this, I'm saying that this is going to tilt up. So, I'm just going to shrink my sides here a little bit. At the beginning. And I'm going to come to the end. And we'll just move that up there like that. Okay, now as we view it, up we go. Now I'm just going to go through it quickly and finish doing the rest of this, or the rest of these, and you should do the same. So I would pause this here and um, when you're done modifying the rest, um, come back. Okay, so now that you should have all of your animation um, for each of your slides for your storyboard done, just want to come on back to the beginning here because like, now there's other things we can do to our storyboard to enhance it a little bit. The first thing we could look at is transitions. Okay, so let's click over here on transitions. Now, 
One of the most common transitions used in video of any sort is just a simple cross dissolve. It's mainly used for a change in scene itself. So we're just going to choose a cross dissolve here and we're going to cross dissolve between the introduction and our first image just to try and make it a little bit easier on the eyes because without it, if you look, let's just take it away for a second. If you look, it's a very bang. Okay, so let's just drop that transition in there a little bit. And now, as you can see, it's just a little bit smoother, which is you know, a little bit easier on the eyes. Now, once again, each shot is just bang, 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 bang. These are all different scenes. So I would actually just stick cross dissolve in between each one, just to sort of make it a little bit more appealing to everybody. Okay. There we go. See, that's much smoother much friendlier, much easier to watch. Okay, now the next thing I would do is, according to my script, I have um, information that should be displayed on each of these screens um, telling me about the product. Okay, so I don't believe I have one for there, but I do for here, okay, because that's representing the camera sitting in water. So I'm just going to come back here to titles and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a lower thirds. I'm just going to shrink that down to the size and I'm just going to say it's for proof. I'm going to change the text now. I've just put little sign here that says waterproof. Get rid of my little color box here. Now, as you can see, it slides on in, it says waterproof. Okay, and my next one says it's childproof. So, we'll just do another local follow thirds and we'll stick that in there. Highlight it and I just want to change the color again. Maybe something different this time. See that green really didn't work. Let's pick something a little bit more vibrant that's going to stand out on that white background. So we'll go with red. Okay, and now my third one, according to my script, is supposed to say that it's tough. This one's actually supposed to represent it landing on the ground. I just forgot to draw the little lines in to show it falling. Okay. And of course it's freeze proof. Why you make a camera freeze proof I do not know, but hey, it's an option and it's a selling point. So we want to tell the world about it. So I'll just make this black because I haven't used it yet. Okay, and finally, now it's our sales pitch. Okay, I'm just going to put something simple here. I'm just going to use uh, a centered title, and we're just going to drag that there. And we're going to say, get your Canon D20 today. All right, now. That is pretty basic, simple, animatic, okay? It gives us everything we really need to represent what we're trying to show. Um, so now what you just need to do is just come up here, click File and Share, and scroll down here to YouTube and click on it. And as you can see, it'll put all the information in. You'll enter in your login details, click Next, and that'll go ahead and um, that will upload it to YouTube for you. Um, I hope this has helped you guys. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, email me or contact me on the collegestudent.net.au. Thanks, guys.